while we think about innovation and in these breakthroughs that you know that that eureka moment of something that no one has ever thought before yes that innovation exists and it happens occasionally but what's really important is there's another kind of innovation that is much more predictable and investable because you actually get evolution of a known technology among a set of known performance dimensions. And I can actually improve that technology dramatically just by investing in the roadblocks to its uh, application or to its performance to date. So take solar as an example. Solar went from being 22 times as expensive as grid power to basically today being in the money in any part of the world that has good sunshine or higher power prices. So anywhere I'm using diesel fuel to fuel my generator or anywhere that I've got Hawaii or California style sunshine, solar is already in the money today. And that reduction, that 22-fold reduction in price, basically was driven by a set of known levers, using less material, scaling up my supply chain, improving the efficiency of the manufacturing process, improving the throughput and output of the equipment, being able to tune my device so that I can capture more of the sunlight and convert it to electricity, and then reducing the amount of material that I use to install and, and build and uh, deliver the solar system, what's called the, the balance of system. All of those elements came together. So was there an original eureka moment? Yes. When Bell Labs invented the solar cell, that clearly was this kind of breakthrough science invention that we prototypically think of. But the path from there has been a path of industrialization. It follows a law, 18% improvement with every doubling of the installed capacity. That's what we call a learning curve. So it's that cumulative experience, not just from manufacturing, but of continued investment in renewal of the technology and evolution of the technology.